Dear ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. I hope that all of you are doing well in this hot period. I'm Dominic Palatna, the ITTF High Performance Manager, and I'm very happy and proud to warmly welcome all of you to our third lesson of the ITTF High Performance and Development Four Classes with Massimo Costantini with the topic Nationals. I want to talk shortly about our lesson code, about our rules. To all the attendees, please mute yourself and turn off the video. Just Massimo's and my micro and webcam will be on. Please don't touch anything regarding the recording of our presentation slides. And please leave your questions in the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible in the question and answer part of the lesson. Thank you very much. Today, Massimo and I will talk about national. It will cover the ages between 15 and 21 years. We want to emphasize what you should consider within the ages and what uh, the issues are you have to deal with and on which you have to work with your athletes. Beside the lesson of today, the last one will follow on next Friday, ending the series with the professionals. The contents of today will be the common elements like goals, planning, training and competition. And on the other hand, the sport and performance elements like strength and conditioning, sports psychology, technique and strategy and tactic. I wish all of us a very informative and educational lesson. And now the floor is yours, Massimo. Thank you very much, Dominic, and uh, welcome to all of you to this uh, third uh, lessons or class let's say and uh, guys we have so much to say today to share with you uh well uh, in italy we used to say we have a lot of meat on the fire you know so there is a really really rich uh, a rich class today uh, again i will have uh, um, the help of uh, dominic to cover some uh, some topics uh, actually i also have uh, one uh, question for all of you so get ready to, to write a few things, uh, just one word actually, on the, on the, on the chat. So uh, yes, today we are talking about the, the nationals and uh, I would call it's, uh, it's performance time. You know, so we have uh, kids uh, from 15 uh, years old to 21 years old already achieved something and uh, what to consider? So I just put a few things, of course, uh, assessment, uh, training, competition, uh, where to go, what to do, uh, what is better for me at this age or the other age. And then, of course, we have to cover now the, the, the things regarding the training, periodization, uh, specific fitness, uh, psychology, of course, uh, techniques, statics, uh, all the things that you are uh, quite familiar, I guess. Then different scenarios, uh, opportunity to travel. Now it's time for them maybe to, to travel uh, more than before. And uh, when the player also having a different environment, uh, uh, it's important that as a coach, you have a good, uh, good, good cooperation among the coach. So um, going forward, uh, now we have to think about the background. So the other day I was watching the, 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 previous, uh, the previous class, uh, and uh, when we, we think about these classes, uh, uh, once we finish, uh, you, you should have uh, one, one long, let's say, uh, guide to, uh, to, to think about and then to work around because those uh, elements we are uh, keep giving to you are basically your, uh, how to say, your stimulus, your, uh, your uh, um, something where you can work around then you can think about uh, and then you can develop, uh, you can uh, see the results or not, uh, try as usual our uh, uh, regular uh, way to do. So what happened uh, until, uh, until today? Uh, we started to play, now I'm the, from the player's point of view, we started to play, we learned how to play, of course, uh, we competed, we improved, definitely, we succeeded, but also we failed. So we have won maybe a lot of matches, but also we lost a lot of matches. And uh, so we have done so many things. Uh, and now what to do? So uh, let's go with uh, our uh, very uh, familiar elements. Uh, and uh, for me, you should keep these elements as your uh, 
uh, or our northern star, you know, so something that guides you uh, all the time. And then the, there is this uh, a kiss. Uh, it's not a kiss. I mean, you please uh, just don't misunderstand me. It's a, it's a K, K I S by Max, which will explain uh, how you should consider these uh, four familiar element: goals, planning, training, competition that you know very well, and means uh, keep it solid. For me, it's very important that uh, along your career, a career of a player, it's important to keep these four uh, elements uh, all time in front uh, in front of you. So, uh, starting from the goal, so we go a little bit the same as last time. Uh, it's time to perform your goals, of course. Now, uh, it, there is a transformation, basically. We, we go from uh, generic to, to specific, and, uh, and uh, uh, what we have to do? We have to locate uh, the goals, uh, uh, we have to training the go training the goals the competition goals. So when we do the locate your goals, uh, it's very subjective. It's it's yours. It's something as we said the other the other week. Something related with the, maybe with the fitness, uh, maybe with the, uh, some particular areas that you want to you want to improve. But it's very subjective. The training goals is more objective. So what when when you are there, what you want to want to what you want to achieve, and then you can set the, uh, set up the goals for the for the uh, objective, and then the condition condition goals, of course, uh, not depending only uh, um, from us. So we have to consider that uh, uh, we have the opponents. So opponents uh, uh, have the same, uh, let's say, um, same will to do, same skills, more skills. So our performance is not, uh, uh, let's say, uh, totally comes from us, but conditioned by the opponent's, uh, opponent's, uh, uh, opponent's skill. Uh, regarding the planning, this time we have uh, different things, and uh, um, uh, Dominic will uh, will uh, speak later a bit uh, uh, a bit more on this. The planning we have different planning at this stage uh, because uh, uh, we we can have the daily routine planning, the individual planning, uh, but also maybe we are a part of a club, and maybe we are a part of a national team. So each each of these. Uh, uh, let's say um, institution uh, we can call like that. Uh, they have also the, their their uh, their planning. So you see that uh, our activity, our planning, is going to you know to uh, to mix, and uh, it is very important that as a coach you you try to uh, have a very clear idea what uh, what you want to uh, do with the, with your players. So. Consider these different uh, aspects. Uh, uh, training, of course, uh, at this stage, uh, as we said before, we have learned, we are improving. Uh, it's time to perfect. From my point of view, it's time that you are going to uh, uh, to develop your personality, your uh, uh, body, your uh, strokes, of course, everything coming uh, better, bigger, and so on. So uh, uh, training this uh, this uh, uh, in this phase is to make uh, something free from faults. How many times we we say to the kids, you know, uh, we have to keep the ball on play, uh, try to avoid the mistake. Uh, uh, so this is the the time to to focus on this. So to go to the next level, uh, of course, uh, being demanding, uh, working after time. Uh, if you finish your your work uh, with the kids, maybe the kids asking additional additional work. Uh, well, very welcome, I would say. Uh, and uh, and then uh, of course it requires adaptation uh, to prefer to, to perfect your techniques. Uh, from my point of view, techniques uh, is absolutely essential. So there is no champion without uh, without good techniques. So, uh, or very fine techniques. Uh, research, as we said the other day, and uh, learn and teach. Why I'm saying teach? Because you, as I said, you know, you are start getting 
uh, good, uh, but there are other kids behind you. You know, they are, they are starting the same process, so they will uh, they will look at you as uh, as uh, as someone you know to 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 emulate, to 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 do you know to copy. So uh, be ready when we work with the, those kids that they have also that uh, that uh, let's say um, that role as well. Uh, regarding the training, I, I, have, uh, I have done this, uh, for your help, uh, um, this kind of uh, uh, pathway, let's call it, I call a valid, uh, valid routine. And uh, what we have to do uh, in this phase is to consolidate the, um, the techniques, is to definitely to get uh, more aware of your uh, abilities, capabilities, uh, and the things you can do and things you cannot do. So what to do? Push yourself. Use the footwork as a very, let's say, uh, element to, to drive yourself, uh, to do the, the best, uh, to work hard, uh, to feel the confidence that uh, actually I, know, I can cover the entire table, there is no problem because I feel confident that I, through the training I can I can reach uh, that uh, that level of of, uh, of confidence that uh, gives me uh, a free uh, opportunity to to work anywhere. Let's say um, let's say that uh, the drills uh, uh, it's you know we we need the drills to control the, the the our game to control the situation to as I said to consolidate our uh, our techniques can be in the block can be attack can be the combination of strokes uh, and so on. Uh, then we have a tactic uh, part one I would call uh, means be prepared. Uh, and uh, and uh, um, the tactic uh, part two, which is uh, the game mode. So many times during a session, uh, we go for, a, let's say, a partial uh, um, tactic drills where maybe we can focus on a few things, but then maybe we go for the full, you know, game-like situation and uh, this is uh, what I call. So the objective of, uh, of this uh, is definitely uh, you know, um, to, to, to have at the end uh, a verification process. Um, so, uh, in the training, uh, being in the, in, the, in the area of training, uh, you all know uh, the, the multi-balls uh, uh, drills. So, multi-balls, uh, you can have it, uh, many, many use of the multi-balls. And uh, I, have, uh, I have indicated a few, of course, uh, uh, what is the 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 the, um, the purpose of the multi balls? Uh, of course, maybe to keep a certain intensity and uh, to to have the feeling of a player to to realize what uh, uh, what is able or she is able to to do. So uh, when we have the multi balls, uh, we can have definitely to make our best. So we can challenge ourselves. Uh, you are at the other side. You are sending the ball. You are the feeder, and then you can uh, you can put the the players. You know, okay, let's do today. Let's go for uh, 50 balls uh, cross court uh, and uh, without uh, making any mistake. So the players immediately is under the challenge, and then he wants to make his or her own record. Uh, maybe first time can be 40, second time 42, 43, and then it, it gives uh, the players uh, that uh, that uh, ability, you know, to control their uh, their abilities. Uh, then we have more skills, so we can learn. Um, just recently, I, I I I came across one video on uh, on YouTube that was very very interesting. Um, there was uh, you know very well uh, Mr. Liu Goliang and uh, Xu Xin. Okay, also we can talk a little bit uh, next week, I understand, but I want to give you this, uh, this uh, small element. So, uh, um, Liu Goliang was showing uh, a, a, an action of attacking, and he was teaching in that moment. In that moment, the ball was very slow, the, the player had the, the time to understand what is behind, you know, performing that stroke, uh, uh, through the position, the 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 uh, the timing, uh, the, the 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 movement of the legs, uh, and so so many things are there. So when you are in the in the area of learning, uh, I 
think this is a clashing little bit with the intensity. So uh, my advice uh, is to uh, go in a, in a progressive way gradually. Uh, first, you make sure that they understand, they learn the biomechanical action, the timing behind, and make them, uh, how to say, uh, metabolize, make them uh, understand. And then slowly, slowly, you can go faster and faster in order to, to feel that, uh, okay, that new action now is working very well. And then, of course, you transfer to the regular regular table uh, with, uh, with the regular drills or game, and you try to apply over there. But many balls also, uh, from my point of view, it's important that age, again, you know, just think about who you have in front. 15 years old, they have so much to express. They want to do a lot of things, but they don't think enough. So if you notice, when, uh, when they do the many balls, uh, you send the ball, and then they hit the ball exactly in the same way, exactly in the same placement, with the same speed, with the same, so there is no, let's say, process in them to uh, to think about. So you have to rem to remind them. Look, the table is quite big. There is not only that uh, that place uh, where uh, where you have uh, where you have to play. So let's go and uh, and then play play meaningfully. You know. So one time you want to play cross court. One time you want to play the uh, down line. Then a little more. Uh, angle and so so many combination give the habit for them to you know to develop this uh, to this skill because it will come in their help when they when they are there to decide where to place the ball so placement we will see later on it's a part uh, not important extremely important and uh, uh, another part uh, is to you know to to put them uh, what we call out of comfort zone, you know. So this is uh, is your ability to to see. It's not uh, it's not the same as a challenge, you know. So where you can uh, reach, you know, what is your uh, your best performance? How long you can sustain? How long you can uh, you can keep with the same uh, same rhythm? It's not a matter to put the target on the table or. Uh, the speed is just to put them in a sort of, uh, you know, stress. This makes the players sort of, uh, you know, strengthening and uh, reinforcing their abilities, special, special mental, mental abilities. And at the end, also here, uh, what is the result of this is to, to, to getting stronger, getting better always with the same feeling of the player so the realization so once they finish the the the, the session with the many balls or multiple balls they have to feel ah coach yes great today was great today i feel i i i, I have improved they don't know much I, I also i don't know how much they have improved but this this kind of confidence it's it's crucial for them you know to come the next day and maybe next day doing even better so uh, going going ahead, uh, uh, we can go through uh, to the competition area, and uh, it's very important uh, uh, at this stage uh, to select the competition. I have seen so many players that uh, at uh, 15 years old, maybe they want to go to the platinum platinum uh, uh, pro tour. Uh, well, it's okay, good, if you go and you want to watch a little bit, uh, unless you are Harimoto, but we have only one Harimoto, uh, it's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely uh, good, and then you can learn. But, uh, you know, again, here we have to go, we have to go uh, step by step. If you remember last time when we were talking about the goals, uh, there was also the, the, the competition. It was the regional, was national, international. And uh, here is the same. So, uh, fortunately, in uh, ITTF, we have different level, you know, of, uh, of um, uh, tournaments, pro tour, continental, not continental. So, uh, again, you are the main uh, person to guide them properly uh, in, in the selection of the, of the competition. 
And then, of course, select the competition, of course, means uh, winning titles, improving ranking, testing your, your ability, strengthening your status. Maybe you are number, I don't know, uh, 300 in the world. You want to keep this or maybe you are one of the top in the country and you want to keep that. You have to maintain the, the, the status. Uh, coaching, coaching yourself and your teammates. Uh, it happens quite often that uh, you play alone over there. Uh, 15 years old, 16 years old, maybe I have a team of uh, uh, 20 players or maybe uh, even 12 players. At the same time, they play four or five players. What to do? I mean, you have to pick one. <laughs> you have to go for one and then the other. So also this is important to to uh, uh, make them understand uh, how how to how to uh, um, uh, proceeding, and uh, of course thinking big when you are there, you see maybe the the champions. I want to do like him. I want to want to become an Olympic player. So every single competition is the best opportunity for them to go back, uh, maybe coming back from the airport and go straight to the venue and go and play and try because you see you've seen some uh, some interesting uh, things in the in the competition. Uh, and of course, this is the last is pursuing your uh, your uh, your goals. Um, well, uh, when we have the competition, of course, uh, we have a performance analysis. So the performance analysis is a uh, it's okay. I have I have put uh, just uh, three aspects uh, because uh, we are not talking high performance. We still uh, we still uh, are in the phase of uh, development. Don't forget. Okay, we are not uh, total de developed players. So they are in the transformation. They are getting uh, bigger, uh, older, and also the 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 de development of the player is keep going. So performance analysis, of course, uh, is to balance the, the failure and success. Maybe Dominic will uh, explain more. Um, you have seen many players, uh, you know, getting super, super excited for uh, uh, winning a match and getting super, super depressed when, uh, when uh, you know, uh, having a, a, bad, uh, a bad defeat. So it's important also to assist them in this, uh, in this part, teach them that table tennis is made by by failure and success. So this is the base where we have uh, where we have to uh, to start. Then we have the strength and weakness. Of course, uh, the analysis is to understand there. Uh, well, I, I the feeling is I, I have done a very good uh, a very good solution when I used to to turn around stepping around uh, something like that. Uh, uh, but then also sometimes I got caught uh, because the the opponent played to my you know my down line my phone. So that is a moment that you think about uh, and it's coming to the memory actually. You know, so what was the, the, the memory of your experience that you can have, uh, you know, the, the, the best use of, uh, of the experience to, 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 uh, uh, to use the next time, you know? Uh, we said the other day, you remember that kids, uh, they get a little bit, you know, uh, sometimes shocked for something, sometimes super excited for something else. When you get super excited, of course, the, the confidence level increase. When you, when you get upset, uh, you have a sort of a drop. So uh, this is very important to make them aware about, uh, about this. And then, of course, uh, to get uh, ready any, any time. Um, so the sport performance element, of course, uh, you know very well. Also, again, they are quite, uh, uh, quite uh, familiar to you. Fitness, techniques, sports psychology, strategy, and uh, tactics. And for now, I, I would, uh, I would stop here. Dominic, uh, you can take over and uh, please illuminate us about fitness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Massimo for this uh, great uh, lecture, first first part of the lecture. And uh, yeah, as Massimo mentioned, it's time to move slowly but surely from the athletic formation uh, of the athlete to the specialization of the, as Massimo called it, the so it's also the time for the so-called performance time. Uh, yeah, the, I, as actually the primary goal of any sports training is, is, is the improvement of, of competition, efficiency, performance and, uh, and the achievement. And we have indicated in our last uh, lesson related to the hopes 
uh, that the young athletes, they are not merely small adults. Uh, their bones, ligaments and uh, muscles are still growing. So each phase has its main task to focus on. Uh, we will address today the following topics related to fitness. It will be the periodization part one, then the exercise methods, then going over to the endurance and strength, which gain more and more importance in these ages, over to the diagnostics and ending it with the testing. And I would like to start with the periodization, the part one. So what is periodization? It's the, the systematic uh, division uh, of, of a season into phases. And uh, what are the further goals of, of the periodization? It's uh, to develop the sport specific uh, fitness levels, to minimize or avoid uh, even the periods of burnout and exhaustion, and to maintain effective level of training. And of course, the main goal is, is uh, to be at the peak level at the right moment. Uh, let's have a look uh, on the principles of the training. And uh, it's very great, in my opinion, to explain it with an acronym called SPORT. So the first letter stands for specific, S. You have to plan and work precisely. Second one is P, progression. The goal is to have a continuous progression. Then over to O, keep in mind to find the individual training load and to gradually make it more difficult for the athlete. Over to the R, the reversibility. You have to work uh, continuously on your abilities, otherwise uh, they get lost and the fitness level drops very, very quickly. And the last letter T stands for uh, tedium. Try to prevent athletes from getting bored, you know, by, by varying the training program. So over to the planning and programming. Uh, first of all, you should keep in mind that each plan should be based on measurable variables. That's one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. And planning of a training is a very complex uh, control action. You have to consider a lot of things the goals, the objectives, the periods, and the personnel, and of course also the technical and material prerequisites. The base should be on the measurable so-called quantitative variables, as I mentioned before, which provide you an ob objective determination of its parameters and also an evaluation of its effects. It en encompasses the objective changes in the means and the structure of training for each cycle. So uh, as you can see here on, on the, the arrow in the, in, on the slide, uh, the planning is divided in, in the different phases. And uh, I would like to start with the, with the long-term planning. Uh, it's the, actually called the whole sport career. And uh, then over to the middle, middle uh, term planning, you know, it can be, you know, an Olympic cycle or even maybe two Olympic cycles, you know. And then uh, over to the short planning. This is like an annual, annual plan, a maze also called macro cycle. And of course, we do have the meso cycle, which lasts from several weeks to months. And then over to the daily planning, which uh, it consists of the micro cycles, uh, which are one or more weeks. And then uh, over to the training day and the smallest unit, the training unit. The next topic is Matveev's model of the periodization. And actually, as you can see here, uh, we can see the uh, preparation period, transition period, competition period, and the transition period, on which I will talk in the next lesson more on. But uh, at this time, uh, this is the Matveev's model for the newcomers. You can clearly see uh, on the first side that the, the, the volume decreases from the preparatory period to the comp competition period, while with the intensity is the other way around. And of course, also the technique part gets more and more importance throughout the time. Um, as I mentioned, the different periods with a season planning will be addressed on next Friday within the periodization part two. Over to the next slide. It's very important to know something also about the organizational forms of training. First of all, we have uh, the individual training. The form is closely tied with the principle of individualization. It is well known that the equal treatment of no equals, you know, athletes in the training is the biggest inequality and also a big mistake. 
So the second uh, form is the group practice. What is the group practice? It's very closely tied with the principle of homogenization. By forming homogenized groups, training is rationalized. And last but not least, we have the frontal practice. It is uh, the organizational form uh, which uh, covers the whole team in performing the set task at the same time. Then the next point are the exercise methods. Uh, and uh, actually they are very important and they are used in developing and maintaining various anthropological dimensions, primarily the physical abilities. So I would like to address today the load types, the training mode, the muscle contraction type and the load level. Let's start with the load types. I brought you here the example of, of uh, running exercises, I can say, uh, with uh, the continuous run, you know, it's a standard, can be the standard uh, method or the variable method. Um, it's about, uh, you know, in general, I mean, the training load is about the frequency, intensity and the duration. So the continuous run uh, is, is lasting over a long period of moderate work without a rest. So it improves the uh, cardiovascular fitness and the muscle endurance. Over to the interval, which can be also, you know, divided into the standard method and the variable method. The interval is an alternating period of work and rest. As you can see also here on the picture, the heart rate is all the time increasing and decreasing. Can be clearly seen that it's a, you know, load and rest, load and rest. And it improves the speed, recovery, and both of our fitness pathway, the aerobic and anaerobic. And uh, last but not least, we have the fartlek method, which is called in the coming from the Swedish word fartlek. This is speed play, uh, and it's it's about uh, changing the speed and also the territory. It improves the recovery time and both aerobic and anaerobic fitness, and is highly uh, recommended for sports with speed changes. So also very important and very good for table tennis. Let's have a closer look to the interval method. Here you can see uh, an example of the aerobic high intensity intervals to improve the VO2 max. Uh, and you can see here uh, the warm up starts uh, with uh, and the percentage is related to your maximum heart, heart rate, uh, heart frequency. So you start with a run with a warm up 60 to 70 percent for 10 minutes. Then you do the interval, first interval, 85 to 95 percent for four minutes. Then you have an active uh, pause, active rest, we call it again, back to 60 to 70 percent. And then you repeat the same for three more times and then you do the cool down. So altogether 45 minutes It's a great great uh, like uh, you know method to to practice your your physical your endurance abilities the next thing is the training mode the exercises can be static or dynamic so it's also very much uh, you know you have to consider what is more needed in in your sport or actually in the in the current period of the practice over to the muscle contraction types so we do have three types of muscle contraction and you can see the different types of the muscle contraction in the picture with our very sportive athlete who is actually really well trained i have to say i would like to start with the with the picture on the left side it shows the concentric muscle contraction it's the shortening movement of the muscle then in the middle you can see the eccentric it's the lengthening movement of the muscle or also the resisting movement and uh, last but not least, we do have the isometric method. It's the constant holding and also the muscle tone stays the same. And then uh, the last point is the load level. And here uh, I'm going to show you uh, again interval training methods, which start from the extensive interval method over to the intensive interval method and ending with the maximum interval method. So you can clearly see from the volume, from the distance, that the distance decreases while the rest interval duration and the pace, the intensity increase. Let's go over to the endurance and have a little bit a closer look. And first of all, we have to say that uh, in a sport like table tennis, which is not really fully endurance based like cross country or cycling, etc. 
it's about to build up a solid endurance base to be able to sustain first high performance through the hard training and the second point is the long lasting competition days and to have a faster recovery after the high intensity practices uh, table tennis is actually in the in the mix zone so the aerobic pathway as mentioned last time dominates but the anaerobic alactic is also present while the lactic anaerobic lactic it, it occurs just in a very very few situations as mentioned in the previous lesson and over to the strength and i would like to address the topic of the advantages of the exercise machines compared to the free weight training so what are the advantages of the exercise machines it's it provides more safety the movement diversity and the simple use and on the other hand, we have the free weight, so it's more for the advanced athletes, I would say, but you should also, you know, st consider and start to work with your with your with your athletes slowly, but surely on, on those exercises, because it's a very had a very good total body effect and also the exercise specificity. But uh, we have also to consider, of course, the age of the athlete. So this is the, the crucial the crucial period for the maximum improvements in the strength differs between the, the male and the female athletes. So the female athletes, they enter this period of the maximal improvements right after the peak high velocity, how it is called, while for the male one, it doesn't begin until one or even one and a half year following the peak high velocity phase. So that is one of the reasons why the feel female athletes are more often injured in their late teen years, I have to say. And in the in the best case in mentioned like last Friday's, the, the athletes, they should be already trained with proper strength techniques uh, to this time so that they that he she, you know, is pre prepared and uh, the injury re risk is much lower. Of course, it's also very much about the athletics background, as mentioned last time, where, where to start at. So, uh, but if the athlete has gone through all the resistant, resistance phases, so then uh, with the age of 14, 15, it's, it's about to progress the more, uh, to the more advanced youth programs. So the sport specific components, also to you know, use exer new exercise technique and to increase the volume. And the neuromuscular adaptations are from the highest importance in this age. From 16 years uh, to the older ages on, it is about the, the to the to let the athlete begin, you know, to enter so-called entry adult programs regarding uh, to their level, you know. But be in mind, all the background uh, knowledge has been mastered, and a basic level of of training experience has been gained so far. Uh, keep in mind that the gender plays an essential role, as I mentioned before. Beside that, of course, we also do, I haven't listed it here, but we have the own body weight uh, method, but especially also with the own uh, body um, uh, weight method, uh, the technique has to be very, very good because uh, think about doing push-ups, you know, and if the atlas has between 60 and 80 kilograms and you are doing the push-up with a uh, wrong technique, then you could uh, destroy a lot. So over to the sports preparation process uh, optimization. Um, so as we mentioned before, it's all about the planning, the goals and the periodization. But then of course, the, then it's about how, how, how does the, the, the coach uh, set up the procedure of the practice, which, which uh, methods does he use and so on. And then it's about the training implementation. So, and then after that, we can see clearly the training effects. And with the training effects, we are going to the sport diagnostics, which I will uh, address later on. And then we have to interpret them, the results of the sport diagnostics. And then it's again going like in a circle, you know, going back to the, to the planning and periodization. Also, of course, immediately to trying to implement it in the training. But uh, the training optimization requires a big knowledge of fitness relevant character characteristics and also the actual, the current state of the athlete. And bear in mind that each plan has to be modified throughout the time, depending on injuries, the athlete general state regarding fitness or from the mental point of view also and budgetary reasons and so on. 
And uh, at the end of the process, it is in many cases about designing a new plan and program. Over to the diagnostics. And uh, when I applying the diagnostics and analysis of an athlete, you have to stick to the following structure. First of all, uh, it's about the testing procedures. You have to have a test protocol. Then it's about editing of the results. Over to the processing of the obtained data. Then the results analysis is coming. And then you have to present in the next step the result to the coaches and the athletes and try to apply it in the sports practice immediately. And last but not least, you have to control if it worked out or not. And the diagnostics are part of a very successful preparation. And last but not least, we do have the testing. And it's all about a, a proper choice, I can say. Think of what is needed in table tennis and choose the, uh, the testing methods accordingly. Set priorities because beside the benefits of the testing, you have to be aware that the testing takes a lot of time. And um, I would like to, to address the following testing uh, methods, the biomechanics analysis. Then the second point is the anatomical analysis. Third point, functional energetic analysis. Then the fourth point is the lactate step test. Uh, which doesn't have the highest priority if we think of the table tennis specific condition, but it is very important to set up uh, the condition practice of your athlete off, off the table. So it's very important to, to know a lot about it. So the results are highly important, I can say. And last but not least, the fifth point is the table tennis specific lactate test. And it can be done, uh, for example, uh, on the field, on the court, uh, while doing the multiple session. Of course, the sports scientists have to come to the hall, but this is maybe the most uh, important. Uh, they are the most important results, and uh, I would highly recommend this test. And this is now from the first, for the first part from my side all, and I would like to pass over to you again, Massimo. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I jumped too early. <laughs> I just put one, uh, one, uh, one slide. Uh, that was not supposed to be. But I want to make a, a quick, uh, a quick uh, um, reflection on this. You know, so when uh, when we talk about fitness, uh, it it is something again. When we properly educate uh, the, the the kids, so we are going back uh, to the previous class, and uh, we bring them to this phase, and then we have a more, uh, let's say, elaborated works to do. It's, uh, it's very important, number one, that you supervise what they do, you train properly uh, the way they have to do, and mainly to, let's say, to, to give that, uh, that uh, switch to, to get passionate to, to the fitness. Because also, when, uh, when you do the exercise, uh, you have to improve your, uh, your performance. So, as Dominic said, if you do something wrongly, it's of course you create more uh, more damage than uh, than advantage. Uh, I remember one uh, one kid was doing the the, the 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 skipping rope that is uh, quite simple, but because the doing wrong, uh, the next day or maybe not the next day, uh, maybe for two weeks or even more, he couldn't move the legs because uh, he damaged the the ligaments and uh, and uh, the the tendons uh, in their uh, in their legs so because maybe they were you know jumping stopping the, too much on the on the floor so it's very important the techniques again is uh, is uh, you know assisting uh, those kids uh, doing the those exercises so thank you very much dominic i just wanted to to just uh, uh, you know to um, uh, um, say these few words regarding that because it's important for a coach to uh, to understand uh, so the skills. This I, I have put this uh, this sentence. Uh, you can uh, you can read, but I just want to give you what is for me the <clears throat> the skills. The skills uh, when you perform is is like uh, is like a language, you know. So the strokes. Uh, let's call the strokes uh, like words, and the rally is like a sentence. So we have to follow the proper. Uh, let's say a procedure 
when we are going to develop those uh, those uh, those things you know so the, the strokes uh, itself uh, okay i can do many things uh, but then if i don't have a proper grammar let's say uh, so the proper techniques uh, to uh, to apply to put together and uh, then it's very difficult so con so consider consider this aspect that uh, it uh, it helps you uh, to you know to to have uh, uh, the best success uh, when you when you work with the kid you develop and you bring uh, you take him her to the next uh, the next level so last time uh, if you remember we have uh, yeah. we have discussed regarding the the discipline so at this point uh, I just want to uh, refer the discipline that moves uh, to to a, a different uh, uh, areas let's say like that uh, because we are going to perform uh, uh, on the competition so now i have to be you know uh, aware of what uh, of what I, I i can do so of course i know that 